the world where there's so much is going on it's hard to even hear myself think hola it's avi and welcome back to my channel today i wanted to do a bible study with me but I kind of wanted to do something different. I've not, I don't think I've ever done a Bible study with me, like a particular like chapter of the Bible. And this is not a particular chapter of the Bible. We're gonna actually go over a few women in the Bible who prayed for babies. So I thought this would be a good series to do, a who prayed for a baby in the Bible series. And so I just wanted to dive in and we're gonna start at the beginning at Genesis. I'll put all of the scriptures that I refer to in the description below, but we're going to start at Genesis, the 11th chapter. So open your Bibles. This is going to be a study on Abraham and Sarah, mainly Sarah though. So if we go to Genesis, the 11th chapter, the 30th verse, this is where the Bible first mentions that Sarah is barren. Okay. So but Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. Before Abraham's um, name was changed, Abraham and Sarah's name were changed, they were Abram and Sarai. And so if we, that's the first mention. And I wanna note, before it was mentioned that she didn't have any children, in the Bible, it just lists all these, like it lists the family lineage of people who were having children. And I just found that ironic. But moving on to the 16th chapter, so jump to this, or yep, jump to Genesis 16. It starts to talk more about uh, Sarah's TTC journey, right? About her trying to conceive but not being able to. And mind you, Sarah at this time, Sarah and Abraham, I believe, were about in their 80s. So they were pretty old. And I know that at least Abraham was 86. But it says, now Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him. This is the 16th chapter. But she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarah, Sarai said to Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. Okay? Gave her to Abram as a wife. Here, take my husband. Go have my children. The Bible sometimes, you know, we're not going to go there today. When I read that, I thought about the word desperation came to, um, it came to mind. We get so desperate for it, not just, you know, not just in the realm of trying to conceive or having a baby, but just any prayer in general that we have brought to God. We get so desperate for the things that we want in life, right? The things um, that we desire to have that we start going out of the will of God. Um, we get so desperate to, you know, fulfill this prayer when it's not your prayer to fulfill. Like it's it's God's prayer to fulfill, right? But we want something so fast and so like quick that we start to step out on God and not out on faith. And as you read on, Hagar, of course, gets pregnant. She becomes pregnant, and then Sarai gets mad. <laughs> Sarai gets mad, um, just kind of like Hannah did. I have a video talking about Hannah, how Hannah prayed for a baby as well. And Sarai, she said in, in the fifth verse, fifth verse, then Sarai said to Abram, this is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms. Now she's pregnant. She treats me with contempt. The Lord will show you who's wrong, you or me. I love, I love Abram. Abram, go, he, he said, look, she is your servant and you deal with her as you see fit because you don't want to tell me to get her pregnant. <laughs> so, um, yeah. 
and that's how kind of like how our TTC journey is. Like we're all we're up and down. The hormones like are up and down. And I feel like that's the that's the sum of a TTC journey. Like we see other women get pregnant so like you know easily. Fertile myrtle. I know y'all have heard that term before. We see these other women get pregnant so easily, or that the phrase oh i wasn't even trying oh i got pregnant my first on the first try or things like that and for the woman who has been trying to conceive for a very long time that can bring out those emotions right bring out sadness bring out grief bring out uh, depression i just want to encourage you today with this video with this scripture with these scriptures you can you know study these scriptures and kind of get a feel for how what sarah what sarai turned sarah was going through right she's we go through these things currently these things that are happening in the bible we went we are going through these things. Women are going through these same exact things. Yes, it might be worded a little bit different. No, we're not giving other women, um, well, sit there surrogacy. <laughs> I was gonna say, no, we're not giving other women to our husbands, but there are surrogates, there are surrogates. So I guess that's that. There's IVF, IUI, that is like a perfect de depiction of this scripture, right? Um, of that. So Hagar had a baby. Hagar had a baby. His name was Ishmael. Now let's move on to chapter 18. At starting at the 10th verse, um, it says, then one of them said, they were around a group of people. Then one of them said, I will return to you about this time next year and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Sarah was listening to this conversation from the tent. So she, they couldn't see her, but she could hear them, right? She was eavesdropping. Abraham and Sarah were both very old by this time, and Sarah was long past the age of having children. So she laughed silently to herself, silently, silently to herself, and said, how could a worn out old woman like me enjoy such a pleasure of having children, right? With an old man. Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Who is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son, right? So Sarah was afraid. She denied it. She said, oh, I didn't laugh. Girl, you did. That's what the Lord said. Girl, you did. You did laugh. And just to compare that to today's time, is anything too hard for the Lord? No, nothing is too hard for our God. And I know, I know, no, 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 because I heard it often too. And I was just like, eh. when you're in a TTC journey and someone tells you to trust in God's timing, it's not something you want to hear, right? But it's something for me, and when I was going through it, that I had to embrace. I had to embrace the concept of God's timing. God's timeline is perfect, right? God's timeline is perfect. His timing is perfect. When I thought about my first miscarriage, I had a miscarriage. Um, I had two miscarriages back to back. The first miscarriage, I actually felt the womb, like I felt my womb opening. Like I felt that the Lord told me that my womb was open to conceive. And two weeks later, so I, I had been praying, you know, of course, two weeks later, I got a positive pregnancy test, but then I started to miscarry. And I'm like, okay, well, Lord, why? What I felt in my heart, the Lord was uh, speaking to me at that time is, that it is not yet time. I just wanted to let you know that you are able, like your womb is open, right? But it's not yet time. And then I, did, I didn't heed to that. <laughs> I just started, you know, I was still trying to conceive, trying to do all the things. I conceived a second time right after that miscarriage, didn't even have a period. I conceived right after the miscarriage and um, I had a blighted ovum, a blighted ovum miscarriage, and that lasted 40 plus days. 
And after that, I was like, okay, Lord, your will and not my will, because his timing is perfect. And I read in one of my devotions, I'm currently reading 100 Days uh, to Believing Brig, of Believing Brig, Brig, 100 Days of Believing Bigger devotional journal. And in my devotional, it said, you may be good, but God is great, right? God has a higher, a wider, and more eternal view, right? What you're looking at right now, and sorry, I'm filming on my phone, so I keep looking at the, but anyways, what you're looking at right now, your TTC journey, you have tunnel vision, right? You have tunnel vision. Think of like an underground tunnel. That is you right now in your TTC journey. You have tunnel vision. The Lord can see it all. He's above that tunnel. He can see in the tunnel. He can see around the tunnel. He can see through the tunnel. He can see the end of the tunnel. Right now, what you need to be focusing on is him. 21st chapter of Genesis. We're still in Genesis. Genesis 21 says that the Lord kept his word and did for Sarah exactly what he had promised. She became pregnant and she gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. This happened at just the time God had said it would. He said a year later, a year later, he showed up and showed out, right? And Abraham named their son Isaac. Eight days after Isaac was born, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded. Abraham was 100 years old. Wow. He was 100 years old. Like, I'm so touched by the different... I, when I was trying to conceive, I read all of the stories of the barren women. And there's six total in the Bible. I read these stories and there's also six testimonies from these stories. And so I just want to encourage someone today, you know, to the woman who has been trying for a really long time, trust, rely on God, right? Like seek him with all of your heart and he will give you the desires of your heart. Sis, like the uh, Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not, lean not onto your own understanding because we don't understand everything. Lean not onto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path, right? Acknowledge him first in your TTC journey so that you know what path to take. Maybe you're dealing with some hormonal issues that you're unaware of. You're just trying to conceive without taking the proper steps to conceive, without taking the proper steps uh, to balance out those hormones. Seek the Lord. See what it is that you need to change in your life in order to conceive, right? Seek Him first. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you. We give you honor today because you are worthy. You are worthy of the honor, worthy of the praise, and we just magnify your name today, God. We thank you, Lord, for this time, for this season, for this moment right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this woman who has clicked on this video, this wife who is trying to conceive, God. We just thank you, Lord, that you are a healer, God. You can heal any womb, open any womb, Lord. We know, God, that sometimes it takes a minute to get pregnant, but Lord, we are seeking you, God. We want, Lord, these women to seek you, Lord. Seek you with all of their hearts, Lord, and lean not onto their own understanding, God. We just we just pray, God, that you will open up minds, open up wombs, Lord. And Lord, for uh, the woman who has been trying for a long time, God, please, Lord, just embrace her with your peace, Lord. Embrace her, God, with a peace that surpasses all understanding, God, because we don't know it all. But you, God, you know it all. You can see above and beyond what we can see, God. But we know, Lord, that your word says that you will bless, that you will bless above what we expect, God, exceedingly above 
exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think, Lord, as long as we seek you, as long as our hearts are turned to you. And we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the promises that you have over these women who have clicked on this video, God. And for those women who are not trying to conceive, God, we just ask, Lord, that you bless them in the ways that they are praying, God, the prayers that they are seeking you for, God, that you bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Make sure if you did like this video to hit the thumbs up. It really helps my channel, really helps my channel get out to more women who may be trying to conceive um, and need a prayer over, the over their lives. And also subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.